Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. And again, we want to give thanks to our Patreons <coughs> here on this Thanksgiving Day. Thank you guys for supporting the channel as uh, we have a ever-growing, and we're thankful for that community over on Patreon, which is a pure pleasure. It has been wonderful growing that community on Patreon. It, it's like, you know, these are, these are your go-to, and everyone is so positive over there. It, it's wonderful. Absolutely, and we recognize there's a lot of work to do uh, in this world, a lot of awakening, and we see the world awakening, yet there's still, still, still so much uh, sleepwalking, so to speak, that's still going on. And here we see a state of emergency declared as two Kentucky towns evacuated following hazardous chemical spill from derail train. Yet another derail train. This is again a CSX carrying hazardous chemicals. F at least 15 train cars involved in the accident, including two sulfur dioxide cars that were breached because of the spillage of their contents. Uh, from the wreckage, one member of the two-person crew was treated on the scene for minor injuries. Police are strongly encouraging residents to evacuate the area. So again, this is in the Livingston, Kentucky area. You know, what can you say? We've had so many of these. I mean, just so many of these. You can't keep, keep count of them. You really can't. And it's obvious that, you know, they're not all natural occurrences. That's pretty obvious as so many of them have had these hazardous chemicals in them and and we've seen just time and time again uh that there's obviously some well there's there's some agendas underway i know i mean this is so so horrible so i guess they um they evacuated whole towns that's crazy and then here i don't know about this area in particular but there's some seriously pricey horses over here in kentucky and oh my gosh if if that happened in an area where they do raise and breed um, racehorses or something like that, there's going to be something else happen because that's pushback. These are this is a lot of money pushing around other money, and then things happen. So I see there's probably going to be more to this coming coming around. Absolutely, yeah. Kentucky is beautiful country. It is absolutely beautiful, and again, it is very very inexpensive. This is a good area. Uh, relatively to Homestead, of course. And we have Happy Thanksgiving from the WEF. Of course, we know that these guys want us to start a new tradition. Uh, and and again, there's chitin, which is a substance found in insects, which for many people, perhaps most, can lead to an infl inflammatory response, which again, that's not something that we want in the body. Inflammatory uh, response is at the root of so many different chronic diseases. So I will pass on the mealworms this Thanksgiving. Me too. And while we're talking about Thanksgiving, now this comes to mind. This is the images I was given as a kid. Everything was, you know, a happy sort of thing. It was just... Wow, okay, we got new friends. This is wonderful. We're in a new land. The pilgrims fleeing religious persecution. Uh, you know, again, they were Christian, but their form of Christian Christianity, uh, just one of many different forms of Christianity. Uh, as is the case, as religions uh, throughout the ages, they, they tend to break down and to segment into smaller and smaller different uh, factions. But, you know, look how positive this is. This is a, a beautiful thing. Here you have the indigenous people sitting down the way they would and just relaxing with, and, and talking to their new friends. But the reality is something different. Again, this is what we are, are sold. Here we see, uh, oh, shoot, you know what? This, this is good. I can tell you right now, this article is going to get removed Um by YouTube, there's some weird thing going on where they will remove the links to anything that comes from MSN. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, and of course, Microsoft is a Gil Bates uh, thing, obviously. Yeah, it's it's weird. Um, but they've been doing this right along. They always say, oh, we're sorry to let you know, but we had to remove one of your links because it contains um, things that might be offensive or 
perhaps misinformation. I forget exactly how they word it, something along those lines. But we do see Biden officially attempts to remove God from Thanksgiving with 2023 proclamation. Now, if this is out in the mainstream, again, this is for everybody's consumption because they want everybody to feel separated from the other person. This is exactly how the system works. So, you know, giving thanks, that's what Thanksgiving is, right? Giving thanks. And then it says, since the first Thanksgiving on Plymouth Rock and its subsequent establishment as a day of thanks on October 3rd, 1789, the recipient of the thanks on behalf of the United States of America has always been God. But in keeping with the destruction of everything good and virtuous in this nation this year, God has been removed as the recipient of thanks on Thanksgiving. On Wednesday, President Biden released his Thanksgiving proclamation for 2023. For the first time in American history, the proclamation completely omitted any reference to God or faith. A proclamation on Thanksgiving Day 2023. As a nation founded on Judeo-Christian values, this disturbing omission shows how far we have strayed from the original spirit behind America's National Day of Thanksgiving. The pilgrims who celebrated the first Thanksgiving in 1621 were devout Christians fleeing religious persecution. Their celebration followed a brutal first year in the New World where nearly half their population perished. Despite unimaginable hardship, their faith remained unshaken. They credited God for sustaining them and bringing them their first successful harvest. This theme carried on through the centuries with presidents honoring God in Thanksgiving proclamations. And, you know, it goes from George Washington, again, top-level Mason, imploring all Americans to acknowledge God's providence and to unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of the nations. And, you have Lincoln declared that government offices would be closed on Thanksgiving Day in 1861, writing his proclamation, No human counsel hath devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. Interesting terms there. Uh, Former number 45, let's just say. In 2020, said, on Thanksgiving Day, we thank God for the abundant blessings in our lives. I encourage all Americans to gather in their homes, places of worship, and offer a prayer of thanks to God for our many blessings. So Biden, for the first time, is is not including that in the speech. Now, maybe that's because they want you to recognize uh, what's coming about, which is you know the end of the U.S. as we know it. That's part of their plans. It's always been part of the plans. 2024 will be the year that we really see that start to manifest and perhaps it'll be pretty much done within a year or two. Uh, it, it could very well be. We'll have to see how that rolls out. But here again, this is clearly giving you indications that a tradition is not not being honored and there's going to be implications, divine retribution and again, it, when you look at this, they don't word it the creator of the universe. No, it, it's you know God in the heavens. Now, the reality is there's been innumerable beings called God, <clears throat> right, that came from the heavens. You know, and I have to say, just adding to everything you added to this, to me, it's like a reverse psychology trick because the mainstream, giving the mainstream, their God and their religion as if it's a really good thing are now pretending to take it away. So anybody who's in the mainstream religion are going to be like, oh my God, no, you're not going to take my God away and make them want that mainstream religion even more. So to me, this is like one huge psyop. It absolutely is. You know, which God are we talking about here? Because, again, you know, our, our earliest references in the Bible are in the plural. It's Elohim. That's the original Hebrew word, which is plural. And it can mean gods. It can mean judges. It can mean they who judge. 
And the deeper we look into the original language, the more we realize that the stories that we get are very similar to the Sumerian, Babylonian, and Greco-Roman stories. They're all very similar. Actually, the stories all around the world are very, very similar because they talk about a classification of being with, with much higher technology that rules humans. And in fact, as, as I'm reading a very dry book right now on Sumerian history, and the origins of the religion and it's written by somebody that I don't think has any clue of the conspiratorial nature or what they would deem a conspiratorial nature of the studies of the Anunnaki again uh, from a different point of view and yet at the same time they make the statement that curiously enough it's as if those gods were living with the humans <laughs> it's like <clears throat> How dense can you be? You know, this is a dry academic uh, just basically going by uh, the Smithsonian way of things, the, the system way of things, saying it's very curious because apparently they did set up the temples as if they were literally the house of the gods. Each temple was to its own god. And they got the first of the foods. They got the first of everything. They were given offerings that they ate and consumed. And by the way, send somebody over to clean out the God's toilet. I know. I mean, it's just something that's gone on. And it, it, it is kind of funny reading the book. Um, very nicely written. I mean, the pictures are beautiful. It's laid out beautiful. But it's also made for consumption for people who are going to believe the narrative, are going to believe the story. And there's some stuff we have in here later that just... I mean, it really made me giggle and took me back to the days that when, you know, they give us our textbooks and they really just train us to be consumers, consumer, consumer, consumer. And um, I think we need to learn how to break out of that or uh, identify it. Whenever you are reading something that's just from the mainstream, understand it's it's there to control you. It's there to get you to think something. It's there to get you to fall into their way of of doing things because, you know, if you, if you think a certain way, you're easily controlled. And that's not going to lead a lot of people down a good path. Uh, that's the concern. It's like, it's like you know these people are going down a path that's, that's going to take away their rights, but they're just sort of happily going along because everything they think is going their way when in reality they're being manipulated the whole way. Absolutely. So, yes, we should give thanks. And, and, you know, Cindy and I make it a point to always, you know, bless whatever it is we eat. And we ask that whatever it is we're eating, whether it's, uh, you know, fruit, a vegetable or anything else, we ask because everything is imbued with consciousness, uh, that that consciousness be happy and free and, and be blessed itself. And we give thanks to all those that made it possible to bring that uh, to us and and allow us to have it be utilized to the best of its ability to nourish every single cell in our body, which each individual cell in your body is a unit of consciousness. This is part of <clears throat> the the matrix, the, the natural matrix that we're in. As we, we do have a creator of this ma uh, matrix, but it's it's certainly not well represented. It's really not represented. Um, in the mainstream uh, religions properly as we see this we're still always given this and and it's true that there is in the in the in a fundamentalist mindset this feeling that christians are still always persecuted the reality is whether you're Christ, christian you're islamic you're jewish whether you're atheist whether you're you know, any sort of other religion, there's always persecution because humans are always persecuted. And the reality is the system turns humans against other humans. This is the first divide and conquer. Uh, this is like the first rule of the power structure. It's Genesis 11. Totally. It's, it's the Tower of Babel. Come, look, humanity's united. We have to divide them. When you recognize that, you know, the dominant religion on the planet is Christianity, it's 33 percent. Here you go. Thirty three percent. Isn't that curious? Thirty third degree masons, 33 vertebrae in the human spine. 
Uh, yet what age did Yeshua Jesus die? 33. You really think so? No, it's all allegory. It's all symbolism. It, it's all part of the dark matrix, which clouds people's minds. And, and again, there's so many levels to awaken to. And, you know, yes, maybe now most people don't fully trust the media. That's awesome. That's a step in the right direction. Maybe they're even starting to not trust any politicians. But unfortunately, I think the majority are still split into left and right. But more are recognizing that really it's the political system in general that is the problem. And still, though, you'll have others not recognize the fact that, you know, your belief system is given to you by the elites. Who was King James? Oh, I only trust the King James Bible. You know, ahead again of all the Masonic lodges in Scotland and England. Of royal blood, of, of Anunnaki, Ijiji, Illuminati blood. And you trust them? You know, who, who originally commissioned these different councils to give us one unified form of Christianity? It was Constantine, the pagan Roman emperor, who is accountable for countless deaths and destruction. Again, it's the system. It's the system, and yet they trust that. It's, it, it doesn't really uh, make any sense when you really think of it. Compulsory conversion of Native Americans to Christianity by Spanish Jesuit missionaries in the 16th century. And it wasn't just the Spanish Jesuits. You know, it was, it was forced on them. So what we're really doing here on Thanksgiving Day is, it, for, for most people, they're not aware that what they're giving power to is the system. They're celebrating a certain period in time in which the takeover of, of one peoples, one group of peoples, and really the elimination of, the, of their, their ways is being celebrated. We should always give thanks uh, it's for having this human experience and being able to have this human experience. It is a blessing to be able to come into the 3D and to have our, our spirits learn and grow and explore it is, as most beings, most intelligences are not in this density. There are more intelligences, more consciousnesses outside of this density. This density is, is most definitely one uh, that's full of trials and tribulations, but it does offer the chance for reward and growth, expansion. Right. I mean, expansion, that's, that's key for everything. You know, but to me, when I when I see this, it's just so sad that the indigenous people were treated so badly under the church and the church is the one saying that, you know, this this is going to happen to you because you are the savages. So they send in their soldiers to uh, rape, pillage, you know, spread disease, do whatever they're going to do because these indigenous people are savages and they will be better off and every every time i see that celebrated it, it breaks my heart but at the same time i don't want to sit here and tell people don't enjoy your family on thanksgiving you know definitely give thanks to your food enjoy your family just recognize that the system is what it is and we need to find a new way of doing things um and, and that's kind of where we're at right now. And that awakening is very much like a snowball. It just needs to reach uh, outer outer places. You know, I, I, I love the holidays because I think I love the, the sweetness of giving, you know, what that feels like to, to give and what it feels like to bring people together, that warm, fluffy feeling. I don't put a label on it, but I do enjoy my holidays. Um, it's just the recognition of everything, I think, is what's going to help us walk out of the matrix. Absolutely. As, as you see this photograph from 1900 uh, showing some of these people that were converted. And, you know, Cindy and I both have um, lineage here uh, to the indigenous people. And, you know, again, when I think to my, uh, my father, for instance, you know, his mother... His mother's mother was born on a reservation in Oklahoma after the Trial of Tears, and then his father came from Mexico, and he was brought up 
strict, you know, Catholic. And again, you, you take people, you convert them, and often you turn them into a uh, zealot in that conversion, that, that generation that comes up in, in the new system, often they'll be the ones, you know, again, that the system can utilize fully. And, you know, it, it's a sad thing. It, it truly is taking away heritage, as you can see these, these photos of, of what they look like before, you know, conversion. And, 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 you know, we're brought up in a system that will think this is progress. Yes. You know, well, what is that Christian way? What, what are Christian beliefs? Because this was condoned by the church. This was condoned uh, not just by the Catholic Church, but, but by others as well. And what, what, what was happening was a, a, a massive massacre again in the Americas. And it's not just in the Americas. Look, look at what uh, Great Britain did with India. And, and it goes on and on. It, it goes all around the globe. The system converts people to new belief systems because it benefits the system. It has nothing to do with the validity of any of the belief systems. And again, if you're really truly following uh, what you feel is at the core of Yeshua's, uh, well, let's say, the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, uh, talking about the meek inheriting the earth, talking about turning the other cheek, somebody wants your cloak, give them your tunic too. Well, you're taking away everybody's land. You're forcing the removal of people from their homeland. It's exactly what is going on again in Palestine. And we go back to the time of King David and before him, King Saul. And before that, you know, what, what was there? It, before it was Israel originally, it was, it was Canaan and Canaanites. And, and who were these people? Well, you know, if you look back, uh, it appears that they were seafaring people that came to the uh, area. You had the Philistines and, you know, Palestine, you know, the root of that comes from the Philistines. And who were those seafaring people? Uh, that's, that's a very, very interesting question because now we're starting to delve even farther back and we're starting to get into uh, refugees, so to speak, uh, both refugees from the destruction of the Younger Dryas period and really the Atlantis is what we're talking about. And there were many different beings on, in, on Atlantis. Atlantis was a society made up of all sorts of people from here and not from here. Many extraterrestrials coming and going. All knowledge of that had to be eradicated. They can't have us knowing that in times past, there were extraterrestrials amongst us. Some of them that taught us uh, how things really are, which fly totally in the face of what we have in the dark Kali Yuga with the system giving us the belief sets that we are just basically, what's our purpose? Well, our purpose is to serve God. That's basically the Abrahamic tradition, whether we're looking at it from a Christian or an Islamic point of view, when you go to Judaism, you know, it gets even more interesting in some ways. And we could talk about that in other videos. But basically, the two dominant religions, which is more than half the population of the planet, what's the purpose of humans? To serve God. Now, the extraterrestrials that were here were like, uh, no, you know, the, benefic the benevolent ones, they were letting us know that that God, that source, is indwelling in all of us. And this is what the Gnostics understood. This is what many uh, that professed a uh, st structured system more in tune with the Western mystery tradition. This is what we have over in the East as well. This is what the indigenous people around the world knew, that, that God's source is in everything, even in the trees, the birds, the fish, everything. That's all animated by the one great spirit that is everywhere and, and in everything. And, you know, you could break it down as simple as Father Sky and Mother Earth, and you would have it closer uh, to the reality of things than what we've gotten by the system. I mean, what if you really knew and you really could experience the consciousness of a, of a tree? What if you really could and you really were experiencing the consciousness of a river? 
and you were that entity that is inside the tree you were the entity that is inside the river and you are simply being and you were just as you are now but simply in a different a, 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 a different container we'll say but you are still you and if you knew that consciousness is just as much in that tree as it is in you how would you treat things would you not converse with them would you not talk with them would you not you know appreciate them in a different way because you know what what is one of the better things to do is do unto others so as you would want to have to have things explained to you or you would want to understand things you give that back to every living being that you can see that has animation trees rivers bushes grass fruit vegetables everything is just as you are and and if you were able to simply experience that and know that it would change a lot of people's perception and understanding about the con conversation that we have every single day with every animated being on earth yeah in fact there's nothing that's not animated when you get down to it because you know again this this matrix was created for the exploration of spirit uh, of that which is pure consciousness and so this is simply a case of spirit being embodied and exploring this reality through many different perspectives so you have andrew jackson forcibly trying to remove the nations with the indian removal act it, it did happen may 28 1830 indian removal act becomes law Cherokees resisted the law the longest. They didn't move until 1835. The Cherokees fought in Supreme Court, met with Jackson. Ultimately, the Indians lost, and they were forced into Oklahoma, you know, the indigenous people. So a little trivia for you guys. You know, just like the Cherokee and the rest of the Native Americans found out, they tried to fight the law, and the law won. What group, what group did that song, I Fought the Law and the Law Won? Yeah, because it's the system. You're not going to beat the system. And again, when we have these politicians now coming out that look like a ray of sunshine, look closer. Look closer. Where are their ties? Are they, are they are there ties to the the ones that want you to eat bugs? Yeah, in reality, are are they pushing uh, for one side in any war, whether it's Ukraine or or Israel and, and Gaza? This is a little essay here on the forced relocation of the Native Americans in the Trail of Tears. This was horrible. And, and so many people lost their lives being kicked off their land. This is what the system does. This is what's happening right now, again, in Gaza. It, and as we talked about before, and uh, this one wants me to block it. There, this is National Geographic, by the way. 500 year old Catholic decree encouraged colonization and in fact it was it was read in a language that the indigenous people didn't understand to them saying well you know our religious authorities say this land is given to us by God so just to let you know you're now our slaves this is how the system works and yet you still have so many people in the system that cannot wrap it around their brains because of their indoctrination their fear-based indoctrination because they don't want to be thrown into eternal hellfire that you know they they just can't say no to it the, you know there again it's it's that that stockholm syndrome it it's gaslighting to the highest degree and you see this statement when you when your people come to our land it was not with open arms but with bibles and guns and disease and again this is what the system uses it takes things by force it gives you new belief systems and brings disease many plagues upon the land all the time you killed us with your guns and disease then had the arrogance to call us godless savages yeah, it, it, it truly, it, it's just the system doing what it does. As we see, you know, the Pope, you know, kissing the hand of a red shield. And it was a red shield that said, I don't care what puppet is on the throne because I, I, I control the money supply, you know. And so that means I'm really the puppet master. But no, the red shields, again, their name is not even their original name. 
They are the red, and you could take that in many ways. Blood, sure, by blood is how the system works. Shield, they shield the others that, that stay anonymous. They stay in the shadows. You know, I'm just kind of thinking of things this way. So many go into inside of a church or inside of a man-made temple and they talk to god where it should be just the opposite we should be going outside out into the world and allow the god and goddess to speak to us so it just really speaks to the inverted nature of everything absolutely you know pope leo the 10th this statement they've tried to refute it you know, again, it's it's all the fact checker fact checkers and the fact checking fake didn't <laughs> the oh, fake yeah. fact checkers. <laughs> you know, it's just like I, and I noticed like two other people going to say country and they said corporation yeah, Two uh, two other YouTubers this week. I noticed say corporation. Uh, uh, cup, uh, I mean, country. Mm -hmm. And yes, now it's like starting to pop in the subconscious. It, it is a lot. Yeah. Yeah, when you recognize, again, the power structure of the planet, this is how they control us. And when you look to the energies of people, go look through some of the paintings. Feel into the energies of Pope Leo and, and the other popes. You're not going to feel uh, benevolence. You're going to feel pretty dark, dark energies that are very congruous with all the names that we have today, from Gil Bates to the Sickle Maker, uh, to I mean, it goes on and on. Gilgan's Island people, you know, if you if you know what I mean there. This stone was discovered in Baalbek, and again, you know, I guess one of my biggest pet peeves is is people that only know uh, their history from the biblical archaeology standpoint and and don't go out and beyond that and look to uh, well you know where are the roots let's 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 look in in academia but let's use uh, discernment as well and let's see what what is is thrown away by academia the academia doesn't want us to see but you gotta you gotta study from all angles until we're blessed with uh, abilities that like Cindy has where she can kind of see into the akashic records and and discern what what is real and and often again this is something that's going to be more common in the in the age to come in literally a generation we're only like a generation away from people having that type of discernment if you don't succumb to uh everything that the system wants you to succumb to and that, of course, is is including, you know, eating all the nasty food and drinking all the nasty things, uh, at lowering your frequencies, you know, getting involved in, in all these mind numbing games, too. Uh, and it just goes on and on. They, they hit us from every direction. Look at the size of this building block. It, it, there's no way that we could move it today. I mean, sure, we could blow it up and we have blown up tons of evidence. This is a big reason why we have wars in the Holy Land. It's to blow away the evidence. And, you know, that whole concept, the Holy Land, well, you know, it, it, it's again a misnomer because there's nowhere holier than wherever you are at that moment. You know, it, it, again, what we're talking about is an area, oh, that has a history. But then again, there's part of the Grand Canyon that you can't go into because there's a history there. They don't want you understanding either. There is a big one there. There is a big one there that would just tell way too much. And quite frankly, I don't know how many people would be ready for it. You know, even a lot of people who are awake might find that very, very curious themselves. But <laughs> this has really cracked me up because I thought, you know, if we all revert ourselves back to the third grade and let's say we're just flipping through books and they throw some pictures in there of this, you know, what's to say we wouldn't believe it? I mean, they, they could just say simply, oh, these humans were extra strong and this is how they were built. You know, this is how this huge thing was built by, you know, people carrying other people and having these stones. They, they could tell us anything and they did tell us everything, anything they wanted to get us to believe a certain thing. And I, I still, I don't, I don't know. It's just hard for me to go look back and say, Wow, they still have the 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 pyramids were tombs, you know. <laughs> it's just 
It's just silly. And and to think they could absolutely put these pictures in there and just tell kids, well, this is this is how it was built and kids would only believe them because they're kids. So, yeah, if if you believe this again, you know, tell me another. How did these guys do it? Did they all eat their cans of spinach like Popeye? I, I don't think so. And again, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me at all. Nothing that the system would throw out there would surprise me. Yet, if you look deep, there's so much evidence that our history is nothing like what they are telling you. And we automatically, because of the system that we're brought up in today, you know, when we look at modern skyscrapers and stuff, think that, well, because they built with stone and the way they, they built with these more natural uh, substances, instead of altering the natural and, and creating something uh, that we'd be used to today, they chose to build in harmony with nature. And so we think that they were somehow less than us. But but it, the reality is quite the opposite. They, they didn't want to disrupt the natural ecosystem. They recognized that, you know, this experience is to be experienced uh, from a much more natural perspective. And our history is, is not what it's been given. And this right here, this is an ancient necropolis on the island of Sardinia. Sardinia is known for giants. And it's also, again, it's, it's just fascinating. There are many different races of, of giants. And this is what we want to get across. They're not all one group. And in fact, you know, some of those giants are the very souls that are inhabiting modern Homo sapiens to this day. The first batch of the stone figures with eerie expressionless faces, deep set eyes, angular features were dug up, dug up by Sardinian farmers in 1974. Even more remarkable than their appearance is their height. The sculptures are more than seven feet tall. Initially thought to have been made by the Carthaginians who conquered part of the island around 500 BC. Researchers now believe they belong to the Neuragic people who inhabited the island between 1800 and 700 BC, as written. That civilization built more than 8,000 distinctive beehive-shaped megalithic structures known as Naragi that dot the island. Who were these giant people? You know, this has been one of the more fascinating things for me because there's waves of people. There's waves. Uh, we, we don't have a complete picture of it. And, uh, you know, I think it's very, very purposeful. See, you can see, look at what they did. You know, they're working in harmony with the earth. Part of when, the, when they're doing things like this, they are naturally grounding themselves. And I know... Uh, some of you will understand that, uh, you know, absolutely understand that they're grounding themselves. They're, they're using nature to heal themselves and their body and also to shield themselves from certain negative influences. I mean, the stone, the rock, it, I mean, it carries such an important vibration to our bodies and our bodies need to be grounded. Um, I mean, the idea that we have... Um, the rubber on our shoes that prevents us from being grounded it, it really has a huge impact on your health you know if you're one who's on a journey you know you're trying to heal yourself <clears throat> definitely please look into grounding and look how important that is and look how far that can bring you just the grounding in and of itself those stone structures the ground itself it, it we we help each other you know as we touch the earth as earth touches us we are strengthening one another so th this is like again some of the most fascinating stuff and we have books and i think we will do a, a we can get to it once we clean up a little bit more uh we'll do a series with some books that we'd recommend for those that want to delve deeper um this is just fascinating stuff. This article is from 1896. Look at this. You know, 1896. This is what's gone on over time. Is they've they've they keep wiping out more and more evidence. It it says, is this the ancestor of the American race? Because again, you know, America is kind of still young, so to speak. And yeah, there there was always these 
indigenous people that spoke of the giants, you know, because the giants lived with them too, and, and they lived separate from them, but but with them, they knew of them. They they avoided them typically. In fact, again, when when you look down to Patagonia, the first encounters by uh, both the Spanish and the Portuguese. They speak the same way. They, they say that they encountered giants, but they were friendly giants, but they were big. As you see, this is Chang the giant down there. Well, that's only like thigh high. So, I mean, what are we talking? Like 24 feet? It's fascinating really to uh, get into and see because there's been bones uh, discovered and again gathered up and thrown away by the Smithsonian buried destroyed because they the Smithsonian obviously is part of the system it's one of their major tools because they will give us uh, the history that they want to give us when you look down farther discovery of an ancient giant's footprint in British Columbia raises an interesting question heights of all the giants whom we know of in 1896 and you see Goliath, birthplace, Palestine, you know, that's biblical. Uh, height and 11 feet is what they say right here. And they're given the data of that as BC 1063. And then you have other ones, you know, 10 feet, 11 and a half feet. That was in Scotland. 17 feet over in Rouen. 22.6, uh, 25.5, and 30 feet. And, you know, and then other ones down below it, 8.4, 7.9, 8.1, 8.7, 7.8. It's fascinating that, again, when we talk about the cycles of the yugas, they are in agreement with the Greco uh, tradition of, of these different ages, like a golden age, a silver age, a bronze age. And, and, and again, we're in an iron age. Well, we've been in an iron age. And we have the Kali Yuga, and then we have an ascending pattern of the Yugas as we go out of uh, the, the darkest of the Dark Age and start to step into the light. And really, again, the Bronze Age that we now have our feet in is a time of major revelations. That's when we re recognize, you know, we're not always alone. Actually, we've only... We've never been alone. They've just hidden it very, very well uh, in the dark age. I know. And right now is a time where people are really, their perception is becoming much sharper than it ever has been. And people are going through things that they don't quite understand. People are having changes in their minds, in their spirit, in their in their vibration. They, they're awakening so many are awakening and what we need to do is just simply be supportive of that of that function because it's a beautiful one and then this was just so cute i was looking at this and this little puppy he's like it's my cake and <laughs> look at his look after he bites the other one he's like i i didn't mean to do that <laughs> he's just so cute so absolutely give give thanks and it's a good idea to always bless your food and give thanks to all those that made it possible for it to come to you ask that it be uh, charged with healing energy and uh, nourish cells in your body and put out that frequency that all beings may be healthy happy and free there is a sanskrit mantra to that it's called loka samasta sukino bhavantu and what it literally means, may all beings everywhere be happy and free. And may my actions, words, and deeds contribute to that. And so, you know, that is a mantra that, um, you know, I, I, I do place a high value in. So whenever I ask myself, okay, do we cover this? Well, will it help illuminate minds and eventually make people more free, even if it is uncomfortable? Yeah, then we got to cover it. And actually, you can find that mantra more about it over on Heart Sum. We cover it really, really nicely. And uh, you'll be able to see it, read it, understand it. If it's something that you want to take into yourself or something that you want to do starting today, we've done that. And we have a lot of other mantras, but uh, Suki no Bawantu is one that's just, um, I don't know, it, it, it warms my heart and my solar plexus. Yes. So, you know, again, there's short videos over here 
and those are less than a minute and and most of these short videos are of uh, the mantras and how to say the mantras and then we have a whole uh, mantra playlist as well meditations here's the mantra playlist so you can go over here to learn more about the different um, the different mantras and their origins here's loka samasta suki no bhavantu and it's all about global peace and happiness so we can surely use that in this period of time as again there is a cr a creator of this universe and there is a singular source of all things and uh, so we we do absolutely completely definitively uh know that's the case but yet it's not as portrayed in the mainstream uh, systems of the controllers, quite obviously, because that would take away from their power grid. Much love, much thanks. Uh, if you feel so inclined, join us over on Patreon. Every single video goes up on Patreon. Source bless. Namaste. Namaste.